Dear international colleagues, welcome. Dear members or member of the European Parliament, Julia, dear members of the Czech Parliament, dear members of local councils, dear former members of Parliament, dear pirates, dear candidates, dear friends, dear everybody. I hope I didn't forget anybody. Today marks the beginning of a common European election campaign. A common, it, it's bizarre because it's actually one of the smallest parties that is represented in the European Parliament that is the only one courageous enough to have a truly European and truly common election campaign. I can't understand that people that wanted to have a Spitzenkandidaten process in place decided to actually run national, sometimes even regional campaigns, when they want to get one person elected to be the president of the European Commission. I can't understand why we still have three different presidents of the European Union in different roles, with different rights, and with diplomatic hassle whenever all of those three are in the same room with a foreign head of state. I can't understand why the European Union is still insisting on shuttling their members of parliament to stuff all the paperwork once a month across three countries from Brussels through Luxembourg to Strasbourg just so that we can adhere to an old compromise that got taken when the EU was much smaller. If the same compromise would have been taken last year, probably the European Parliament would not have two and a half seats, but they probably would have 16 seats. We probably would not debate in only the languages we currently debate in, but we would debate in probably 20 more regional dialects. Because every time we come together, somehow the European Union managed to build a bigger apparatus to satisfy some regional uh, needs to be recognized. Being a countryman of a small European nation, Nowadays, not anymore at the regional center, but still one of the older members of the European Union. I understand why we need compromise, why we need representation of the needs of all the countries in the European Union. And I understand when there are calls to abolish the unanimity principle. And I have to admit, that the Luxembourgish pirates thought about that. And obviously, we can't support a unilateral uh, abolishment of the unanimity principle when it comes to taxation issues. But that doesn't mean we are against it. The Luxembourgish pirates know that the European Union, with a unanimity principle, in too many that aspects can't work. We need a more democratic union and that means that we need a way to take decisions without blocking, without the need to satisfy everybody at the same time. Democracy should protect the small, but should allow everybody to move forward together with compromises. That's why we support the abolishment of the unanimity principle in general for all the topics that are debated at the European level. That means if we want to abolish the unanimity principle for taxation issues, we need to abolish it for foreign policy, we need to abolish it for migration issues. I know that that probably won't happen. Because there are too many particular interests, but still we should aim for a better union. In 2014, the Pirate Party Luxembourg ran with the slogan, Europe can do better. I still believe that that slogan rings true today. Europe can do better 
Europe can do better when it comes to social issues, to social security, to the right to work, the right to free movement. When it comes to migration issues, where currently we are dealing with ad hoc decisions on every level, every day, instead of giving us a framework to deal with structural problems in a structured way. We need to get back to the drawing board and imagine a European Union that works for all its citizens, that is a beacon of hope in the world where darkness is slowly encroaching around the world. Yes, darkness is when more and more populists start to take over. Those populists have very simple answers to very complex questions and very complex non-answers to the simple questions. They will tell you that, yes, for the simple things, we need to create difficult structures that nobody would understand except them and where nobody would profit except them. And for the complicated questions of our time, they give you a very easy answer. They will say, just elect us and we will deal with it. No plan, no idea how, no budget on when, how, and more especially, who will change it. I think that the Pirate Party is in some ways a counterpoint to the rise of populist parties. And I hope that we can prove that there are democratic alternatives outside of the more traditional parties that can be elected, that show that we can work. And I'm very happy that we had some successes in the past and currently as well. When I see that in the Czech Republic, the Pirate Party is polling in a very strong position, where we can be almost certain that they will get into the European Parliament with not only one, but I think five at the moment. That's, that's about right. Five members of the European Parliament. So we would increase the number of pirates in, in the European Parliament by five. I think the Germans, they all had a poll last week which showed that the support is still there to get one pirate elected, at least. A good campaign could increase that. We have other countries around Europe where the pirate parties have real chances of having a good result. So the goal for us should be to help each other to run a truly transnational, a truly European campaign with common topics on a common platform with a common goal. To make the EU better, to make the EU work for its citizens, and to show the world that we can work together instead of fight each other over trivial issues. It will not be an easy task, but I think the pirate parties internationally never shied away from the hard tasks. Because who else in their right mind would join a party with the name Pirate Party? Come on, guys, you have to be crazy. <laughs> But still, we showed up again and again, and we showed that the name pirate didn't mean that we, were kept, that we came to destroy, but that we came to change, that we came to defend a way of life that some people didn't even know existed before the Pirate Party came on the scene. We displayed a difference of opinion, a difference of attitude, a difference of how we do things compared to other parties. I'm not talking about all those principles that slowly build a common base, because on the 1st of January 2006, when the first pirate party was founded in Sweden, I don't think many had philosophical ambitions of building a new movement. I think there were some friends that had a good party the night before, were pro probably a, still a bit too drunk for their own good, and decided, well, we need to change something. 
And if it's not us who will change politics, who else will? So it was a sort of self-defense. And that goal of self-defense resonated across the entire continent. It's not by chance that the pirate movement emerged across the entire continent. It's not by chance that the same ideas, the same needs, the same discussions took hold around the entire continent. It was because it was time for something new. And as since 2006, so only in the span of 12 years, at 30 now, uh, the pirate movement started to grow. It also became clearer and clearer that way of life the pirate party was created to defend came more and more under pressure. Nowadays we have the general data protection regulation, something that didn't exist 13 years ago. Nowadays, we still debate copyright reform, something that we did 13 years ago, and one of the reasons the Pirate Party got created, because we needed to defend the civil liberties on the internet as well as offline. So it was self-defense. The same topics still matter, and I'm very happy that we are all here together in Luxembourg, where the European Union was founded in sorts, where we have a lot of those institutions reminding us every day that Europe matters, that the EU has teeth when it comes to it. We have the European Court of Justice that regularly shows authoritarian regimes the limits of their national power in a multilateral framework. We have that court that is probably the most hated court in the UK. And why? Well, because they regularly showed them the limits of what they could and couldn't do. When it comes to the, the defense of citizens' rights, it's through the EU institutions that we nowadays have a better framework than 20 years ago. It's through the EU institutions that we have better privacy laws, that we have better social security when you are traveling abroad, that you don't need to fill out any forms anymore if you need to go to a doctor or to a pharmacy abroad. Well, all of you, could bring their smartphones. All of you could bring their SIM cards from home and you don't pay a cent more. It's those maybe small things, trivial things, that we take for granted too easily, too quickly. And we need to remember that it was a fight to abolish the Roman charges. A fight that is not over yet because the rules that we had to give ourselves regarding net neutrality are not far-reaching enough. That was a compromise to get the abolishment of roaming through. But now we need to fight the next step. And that as well, I strongly believe, is something pirates can do. Re-ask questions that people think are already answered and then ask the even harder part of the question again and again and again until true change can happen. So we are a bit like a dog that found the bone and won't let it go. The defense of the civil liberties, the defense of human rights is not negotiable. We can't build a fortress Europe where we forget what Europe should stand for. A European Union of peace, prosperity, social security, participation, democracy. Yes, an image to show to the world what you can achieve if you work together. I'm definitely pro-European. How could I be different? 
Oh, this is now the sun came up. <laughs> or maybe the, somebody wants to tell me to stop. <laughs> um, to, to be sincere, the European Union has its flaws. But that's exactly why we are here today. To propose our vision to change the European Union in a better way, where everybody is respected, whether it's young people, old people, marginalized people, foreigners, where we don't decide based on the skin color or the language people speak. Where we can probably say, yes, on my passport is marked European Union first, and then the name of my country. Where we have, nowadays, advances that we shouldn't roll back. I don't want to live in a country, well, Luxembourg is too small anyway, where I would need to cross borders with border patrols every day. I don't want to live in a, in a European Union where I would need to pay more just to use my cell phone. I don't want to live in a European Union anymore which doesn't respect basic human rights. So we need to imagine the better Europe. We need to imagine how the better Europe can come to, to light. And if that means changing the treaty, well, that only means for me that we need to get pirates into government in all 27, or hopefully 28 in the future again, member states, so that we can have a discussion about how treaties can be changed and then draw up a new European treaty, which takes all those issues into account. Until that, we need to try to fix as much of the problems that there are with the means that we have at our disposal. That means getting pirates elected into parliament, across the nations, but also into European parliament. So today is the kickoff of the European campaign. At the same time, it's my goodbye from the post of party leader here in Luxembourg. After nine years, it's time to retire a bit. Focus on the work in parliament and hopefully see the next generation of pirates entering European Parliament as well in the Czech Republic, in Germany, in other countries, but also hopefully in Luxembourg. Thank you very much. And